Hello students, I hope you all are doing well and in today's session we will see what is stability. If uh, we are analyzing any structure and uh, in the next day we are going to design it, we have to ensure the stability of that particular structure, right? So whenever it comes down to the stability, we have to understand first of all what the stability word stands for. Is it a uh, stability stands for the structure which itself to carry its own self with and stand straight or uh, will not deform? What does it mean exactly over here? So we uh, will understand that first. Later we will see what is the determinancy and indeterminacy. Right. So let's start. The very first definition I wrote over here is it is uh, it is about stability. The definition says that. It is a defined as the ability of a structure to remain in position when subjected to any system of a force. Okay, so they are saying any system of force. If, if I have an object with me, if I have a system uh, with me, let's suppose I have a one simply supported beam. And on that, if I apply a loading, if I apply a loading, what type of... Uh, behavior it shows and how it responds that we have to check if after applying the forces even my uh, internal external uh, forces are comes into the picture at that time at that time my body my object my structure is remain in its position it's remain in its position and even it is uh, applied and it is experiencing different different forces internal dead load live load moving load impact load or uh, internal forces internal resistance everything is happening and still and still my structure is in its own position it has not shown a deflection it has not uh, collapsed down it is if it is still straight in its position then then we will call our structure as a stable okay now uh, this is how we uh, generally stated it okay but in particular if i am designing if i am analyzing any structure what things i have to take care of what parameters and what is the necessity things which comes before stability has to be checked so what i am supposed to check what i am supposed to take care of that is we uh, will see here the stable uh, now see the stability uh, uh, here you can see uh, yes a stable structure and the unstable structure which is uh, with oblique i have said uh, you can uh, refer unstable structure as deficient one okay and now the stability uh, is divided or classified into two parts as uh, the one structure which is called stable other one is unstable and if it is unstable uh, we will further subclassify it as external stability and internal stability now what does it means internal external how internal uh, stability is developed who are uh, possibly gives the resistance who are the members who is is it a material who uh, who plays a role in the internal stability and who plays a role in external stability one by one we gonna understand that okay now here it is a general way of describing stability and classifying it into stable and unstable structures now let's uh, get into uh, get into the uh, definitions of what does mean by stable structure and what does mean by unstable structure when we call my structure is unstable so here if the structure if the structure uh, see here on the screen you can uh, read these are the structures that deform elastically they have deformed elastically now in the last class you have uh, observed in the last class we understood that the structure is obey the hooks law i have uh, uh, in the last session we discussed the principle of structural mechanics in which the very uh, one principle uh, second one i think where we have discussed elastic condition right in the elastic condition i have mentioned that hooks law is obeyed by the structure it 
means that stress is directly proportional to strength if my structure is deformed elastically it means if while deforming it shows a proportionate strain how much stress is developing in proportion to that if continuous strain is developing then i am recommend i am referring the deformation as a elastic right and immediate elastic restraint develop okay under the action of external load so these structures when uh, when the force of a system uh, or sorry the system of forces is applied on a structure these structures which we recommend we uh, referring as a stable structure they show deformation of course they show deformation but they shows a elastic deformation elastic deformation means what they obey the hooke's law and stress is directly proportional to strain and once once you remove the loading once you remove the forces you have applied on your structure then then body will regain in its actual position body will regain its in actual position right so then we call call uh, then that type of a structure we can uh, refer it as a stable structure right now next is the unstable structure in the unstable structure there are the structures read here these are the structures which does not have sufficient number of internal or external restraints it will undergo movement of a structure it will undergo what movement of a structure what does it mean it means that whatever structure i have developed over here if it is under the uh, system of forces it will not have a sufficient internal resisting members or uh, uh, internal external restraints which causes my structure to become unstable and unstable structure always show certain amount of displacement or a kind of movement displacement is very specific i will say here uh, basically it will show us a movement it will not be stable and uh, at its position instead it will start shaking it will start moving and that later we will uh, uh, see it as a deformation or displacement right we will go into that part but if you say the structure is unstable it means that the body has insufficient number of internal and external rest restraint and that's why it is after the applying forces it will show some movement right and that's what the structural stability uh, or definitions of stable and unstable structure now we will moving towards the external stability and uh, when when does uh, this external and internal stability comes into picture the time when i am saying my structure is unstable then if my structure is unstable is it uh, internally unstable or externally unstable and if it is internally what are the forces causing it to get unstable if it is externally unstable i have to check my the external forces and the things which is externally acting over here not specifically don't take the word meanings here we will get into what does it external means and internal means here right so let's go uh, first of all yes external stability it is related to the support system of a structure what they are saying if you are uh, saying if you are saying my structure is externally uh, not stable then it is uh, it is related to the support system of your structure if i am taking an example of simply supported beam let me take an example of simply supported beam here and in it if i am saying my beam is externally unstable or my beam is unstable and i come to know it is because of the supports my support is sinking my support is sinking down and down due to some uh, foundation issue it is sinking down and down then that type of a uh, unstability uh, that type of a uh, uh, sinking of my support what i said over here that is comes under the external stability it is 
and a structure is get unstable due to the supports and supports are comes under the external stability right see here a structure is said to be externally stable now i am saying stable if my support is sinking it is unstable but when we will call it stable when if the supports are capable of providing the required number of independent restraint independent restraint restraint means what they are holding they are fixing my object they are holding my object in its position they are holding my structure at its position in its real position in its recommended position right so whatever uh, supports i have provided they has to be capable of providing the adequate restraint independently they have to give a adequate restraint to my structure and then and then only my structure will call it as a uh, called it as a stable externally stable and when they are providing independent restraint they has to achieve a static equilibrium if they are not providing adequate uh, independent restraint what will disturb our equilibrium conditions will or equilibrium state of my object will get disturbed that has not that uh, that is not recommended that has to be avoided that's why whatever support system i have provided for my structure is need to be give independently adequate amount of restraint and it has to help to achieve the static equilibrium of my structure right next is internal or local stability now what is internal stability it is related with the types and arrangement of a structural joints and members uh, now when it comes to internal or local stability we started talking about joints and members of course the joints and members are you can see it externally but you should uh, think like this that members itself carry a loading but they are not uh, a part of external loading they carry the load and they respond to the external loading upon it what i said the joints and members are not part of external loading what they do they are a part of response system they be, they carry the loads and who will respond to the loads coming upon the members the uh, member will internally respond to them the joints will internally respond to them that is why the members and arrangement of a joints plays a vital role in internal stability of a structure right now this means that the structure should resist deformation by developing the internal force if if i am applying a force on my object force on my members then this member which i am applying forces it has a adequate strength it has a adequate um, uh, capacity capacity to resist the external loading coming upon it if it is not able to provide a resistance to deformation instead material got weak and it is getting deflected it is getting weak and it is showing deformation then my internal force system is not strong enough or sufficient enough to deal with the external forces and that's how my structure is getting unstable and if it not able to provide the sufficient uh, strength then sufficient capacity if it is not shown then my structure will get internally unstable so here it is you can uh, take it as a internal stability is a part of your internal stability is a part of members and a uh, joint arrangement whereas external stability is a part of your support systems how you have provided supports to your supports to your system right now i have a drawings here to make you understand which structure i will recommend as a uh, stable which one is unstable which one is neutral that we gonna see here so see here i have a two uh, uh, sorry i have a multiple diagram out of which uh, we will see first three diagram here the first three diagrams are you uh, you can see there is a ball right see here okay so stable unstable and neutral what is stable stable is a 
structure in which um, it is not visible okay stable now in this stable structure you have to see that my uh, object or my load the ball is present in a in that curved shape that let's take it as a member it is a curved member and my uh, loading system is within it and that uh, load which i have applied here in a form of ball or something else that is stable that is stand straight there right and chances of it slipping down and chances of it falling out is very less uh, it is very generalized example of a stable structure you cannot you can uh, try to understand here do not directly relate it with the real structures right it is generalized way of telling the stable it is stable right uh, but now uh, you have let's take it uh, that curve shape as a bowl okay now you when you keep your uh, ball within the bowl of your bowl then it is very stable right but if you keep that bowl now turn that bowl and keep it upside down right in that case in that case what happens if i place my bowl on the uh, top of it what will happen even with the slightest wind or uh, even with the slightest uh, movement and push or uh, if we strike it it will definitely falls down it comes down it means that it is statically unstable it is statically unstable why i'm saying static because your bowl which is holding the bowl uh, ball inside it the bowl which is holding the ball inside it is in static condition it is at rest it is not moving the bowl is not moving it is in static condition and i have placed a ball within it unstable structure is when the bowl is uh, kept uh, upside down and you place the ball above it then even with the slightest air uh, it will fall down that means it is an unstable state next is a neutral neutral is in which the object is uh, uh, placed on the plane surface you have kept it nicely you have kept it nicely like this it has no chance of falling down it has no chance of uh, collapsing right it will remain as it is until and unless the external force will not try to move it right so this is how we can generally uh, say the stable unstable and neutral type of a structural system now let's see uh, the actual structures the frame trusses which are the uh, real structures let's understand in regarding to that so here i have uh, one beam with me which has a hinge support at both of its end and one uh, other one is free here right so uh, if you look at the beam beam has both of the ends hinge both hinge provides what uh, see here uh, i will uh, i will tell you the support systems here first of all okay we will understand support systems if i take this type of a symbol then this uh, this referred to be a hinge support this will referred as a hinge support okay now what is hinge support hinge support is the system in which other it is a support system in which it will provide a restraint it will provide a hold or it will not allow a movement in vertical and in horizontal direction it has provided restraint it means restraint means what you have used this word frequently in your house when you are mother uh, says you are not allowed you are restrained right you are not allowed means what you are restricted to do something right here 
when I am saying a restraint, it means that my object, my object here is not allowed to move in that direction, in vertical direction and in horizontal direction, it is not allowed to move. Then we will call that support, that kind of a support is called as a hinge support, right? Let's understand the next support. This is a roller support. Roller support, if you want to give an example for the roller support, I will take an example of your uh, channel gates which you provide for the safety. Or channel gates uh, on the uh, gate of your uh, wall compound, there you provide a channel gates, right? Uh, they are like this. right and you have a sub uh, rollers at its bottom right this is the channel gate this is the example of roller support now see what does roller support plays a role roller support is in which you have only restricted the movement in vertical direction in the vertical direction you have restricted the movement and if you restrict any movement reaction will develop in the hinge i have said you uh, you have restrained the uh, restrain the movement in vertical in and horizontal direction therefore the hinge support comes with the two reactions why because if you restricted it it will come up with its reaction right so in the roller support you have restricted it in the vertical direction it has restricted your roller support to move in a vertical direction but in horizontal direction in this direction you have allowed it because you have provided roller as you can take an example of your channel gate channel gate can move horizontally you open it you closed it right so that is what the purpose you have provided for you want to uh, roll your channel gate when you want to go out you will open it with the help of roller support it will move right therefore horizontal movement is allowed therefore horizontal reaction will not develop only one reaction in the vertical direction okay that's how uh, one more thing in hinge support sorry if I take one more time a hinge support, this is your hinge support and it will come up with the two reactions, horizontal and vertical reaction, sorry, horizontal and, uh, sorry, horizontal and vertical reaction and it uh, comes with the two reaction because you have restrained the movement in this two directions, right? And what will be the example? Example for the hinge support is your, uh, take an example of your joint for the doors uh, if you have a door in your house check the joints of that doors where the door is attached with the frame of your uh, door okay there you provided the hinge your door can move uh, vertically no it is not allowed to move vertically right it is not allowed to move horizontally can i uh, can it come down like uh, if you once you uh, pull it no only movement is allowed is rotation at that place only movement allowed is a rotation it rotates right so door is a uh, hinge of your doors are the example of hinge support and the third support is very important support fixed support very important support is a fixed support in the fixed support you will not allow any kind of a movement you will not allow any kind of a movement what it means no horizontal movement therefore vertic uh, no horizontal movement horizontal reaction will develop no vertical movement therefore vertical reaction will develop and no rotation is allowed therefore movement momentary reaction will also develop okay so which one is your fixed support which one is your fixed support there are many you can take an example of your uh, fixed support as a rigid joints rigid joints wherever you provide a rigid joint rigid joints never allow uh, if i take an example of uh, concrete material okay so when uh, two beams are 
column and beam is supported the joint between is is so rigid it is not allowed with any kind of any kind of a movement okay so these are the basically three type of support system which you gonna are uh, used multiple times in a structural analysis so please remember that your next support is a support in which see here okay other than this three supports you have a pin support you have a internal hinge uh, hinges has its own type internal hinge can be of shear type or can be of flexural type so uh, these are the sub categories of supports but whatever supports we will th uh, learn this hinge sorry hinge roller and fix these are the very important one and we will see that here so i have a beam with hinge support so in this beam uh, both the supports are hinge both the supports are hinge therefore it will not allow vertical and horizontal re, uh, horizontal movement and that's why reaction has developed right vertical and horizontal movement is restrained can my beam has a chance of, of movement then it will only able to deflect but it will not able to move from its position and after the loading if it is move it will def it will deflect but if it is in a elastic range then it will regain its position that's why i say this is externally stable structure why externally because my supports my supports are providing adequate restraint if it is bending in member that will be a internal instability if it is bent down and deformed in the member in the span then it will be due to the members and members comes in the internal stability so externally adequate restraint is provided and that's why my beam with the hinge support at both the ends are externally stable right next is your frame in which you have provided one end as a roller other end as a hinge okay so here it is also externally stable structure now you must be thinking but roller support allows a horizontal movement yes it is allowed but still we provide we recommend to provide one as a hinge support and other as a roller why do we recommend to provide a roller support because very slight minute movement is allowed for thermal expansion what do you mean by thermal expansion let's suppose this is a steel frame we have used steel to develop this frame in the th uh, in the hot weather in the hot summer when the temperature raise the ex uh, steel expands whatever stress is developed within has to get relaxed and for that slight movement for external uh, for uh, expansions for the slight movement due to thermal expansion is allowed and that's why we always recommend to provide one hinge support and other is roller roller will allow a minute expansion movement within our structures it will not make it a unstable please yes so now i have shown two more diagrams below check that in this diagram one support is fixed other one is sorry hinge other one is roller why i am saying it is externally unstable unstable because it is a beam it is a beam and my beam if i uh, apply the horizontal forces my beam will start rolling from the other end because you have provided a roller support at end yes it will show some thermal expansion but in frames adequate it is a uh, adequate support it will uh, what will happen in the frames sway will happen whereas in the beams it will it will become unstable due to the roller support but do not get confused over here no no need of getting confused you uh, i am saying the frame is stable even after providing the roller but beam is not stable it is stable but certain instability may occurs due to the roller support okay next is you have provided all the roller supports now this is quite uh, dangerous 
because if all the supports are roller it will allow it to move away my structure will move away because the rollers are placed placed every joint placed at every joint and if the rollers are placed at every joint they will roll down my structure because there is no horizontal restraint all this only provides a vertical restraint there is no horizontal restraint in my structure and that's why due to the support condition my structure gets externally unstable now see here i have shown uh, next two diagrams see it is internally stable it is internally stable the beam with fixed supports as well as externally stable because both the ends are fixed they will not allow any kind of a movement not horizontal vertical not rotation but um, if we look about the internal member span it has no loading upon it under the self width it is internally stable as well okay here in this frame you have uh, one roller support one hinge support and diagonal member is applied you have to see the arrangement of member carefully the diagonal member will uh, help my structure to resist the extra flexural stress if my members get bent this diagonal member will resist the extra force coming upon my system and that's why i said internally stable structures always we provide a diagonal members in the frame structures right but in the uh, bottom uh, diagrams you can see here here you haven't provided the diagonals and if loading comes upon it this internal uh, here you have insufficient members to resist the loading and that's why structure becomes internally unstable internal members are insufficient members are not uh, sufficient that's why they become unstable now this is internal pin you have provided in the beam and this all supports are roller but yes you have fix here so externally it has certain fixity at one point it has a certain fixity at one point no issue for the external but internally when you provide a internal pin that makes my structure unstable then why do we provide the pins okay so you have to uh, analyze first of all the structure to where to provide the internal pin internal pin uh, the purpose purpose to provide the internal pin is to divide or to come down or to reduce the instability of a structure uh, sorry instability not instability to reduce the indeterminacy of a structure please make a note we provide the internal pins in a structure to reduce the internal Inter, uh, internal indeterminacy of a structure how, what is indeterminacy how the pin uh, supports or internal pins reduce the indeterminacy that we will see in the next uh, topic but right now you understand that if you are providing the uh, supports uh, uh, such a internal pins then it makes our structure in uh, unstable but make it determinant determinant means what and unstable unstable you must understood the structure may not remain in its position that becomes unstable and instability can be due to internal forces internal members or joints or can be due to external supports this is clear so far i think with the uh, examples i have explained you now what is determinancy and how the internal pin will reduce the determinancy that is next question so let's go to the next part in the next class we will learn we will uh, learn this part static determinant and indeterminate structures basically the structures are classified into two categories one is a statically determinant other one is statically indeterminate how the structure is classified into statically determinant and indeterminate structures that we gonna see in the coming classes thank you so much